Hello, this is Bernie and welcome to Bernie Studio. If you clicked on this link, I'm assuming that you're interested in becoming a food delivery rider. But before you start applying, let me share with you some tips and learnings that I got along the way. Think of it as if I knew then what I know now, how would I have done things differently? So as of today, I've done a total of 25 shifts and a total of 154 deliveries. So this by no means breaks any records, but I just want to show that I'm providing these tips based on practical experience. So I'm going to break this down into three steps. One, research. Two, prep. And three, apply. And I'd like to further break down research into revenue structure, equipment and operations, and your delivery area. So usually for food delivery, the platforms will insist that you purchase their rider kit. For cyclists, it will be the basic things like t-shirts and the thermal bag. You could also purchase the rain jackets as well, but that's optional. This upfront cost can set you back about $60 to about $100, depending on what you purchase, but I think it's a pretty reasonable amount. It's also good to find out how the fees are calculated on each platform. I signed up for Food Panda and Grab, but so far I've been working on Food Panda because I find that their fees are higher. So the fees calculated by Food Panda is based on your batch, B-A-T-C-H. And the higher your batch, the higher will be your base fee. And batch is calculated weekly based on your previous week's performance. For Grab, it's a little bit different. Grab offers their fees based on gems. So the more gems you collect within the week, the more you can earn. Another difference between Food Panda and Grab is how they offer their shifts. So Food Panda offers shifts in time blocks. So within the day, you can book shifts that range from one hour, 30 minutes to about four hours. And these are time blocks where you have to continue working based on the shift that you have committed to. So for Grab, there's no fixed shifts. All you've got to do is to turn the power button on your app to online and that's when you start working. And if you just want to stop at any time, you just have to press the button again to go offline. So some people like the flexibility of Grab because there's no commitment in time, so, while others prefer a time block, so it's, there's more structure to your day. For equipment and operations, do some research on the vehicle that you choose and the ease of use of that vehicle for food delivery. As a rider, find a bicycle that you're most comfortable with and be prepared to tweak your bike to accommodate a rack. Some basic considerations such as wheel size and type of bike can make a difference in your food delivery riding experience. This is also a good time to assess your skill level when it comes to riding. Even though you can be a very good rider, there's a difference between casual riding and food delivery riding. So one difference is for casual riding, you can decide the pace that you want to ride at and the place that you want to go. But when you're on a food delivery shift, it can be quite challenging because you're on a time crunch. You have to deliver the food to the customer as soon as possible. And sometimes the distance between the restaurant and the customer can be really far. So it's good to assess yourself on how well you cycle under pressure and figure out if there's a need to improve on that. Visualize this, visualize that you're sending things like drinks, soups, and pizzas, all kinds of food in different shapes, sizes, and weight to the customer. So you have to be mentally prepared to accept anything from the restaurant. When I first started, I wasn't sure about what it takes to transport food from one place to another. So I identified that as one of my areas to improve. And finally, for research, research your area. That is very important. So in general, food delivery platforms split the area into zones. So for example, my area, my zone is the Jurong East zone. And Jurong East is a pretty small area. And most of the time as a rider, I go to Bukit Batok, or Clementi or Taban Gardens. So the key is to really familiarize yourself with the area. And if a sense of direction is something that you're not so good at, you have to work on it. Because the customer can be anywhere within this zone. I remember my first few shifts, there was one evening that I <laughs> completely, I had no idea where I was. And it was so hard to look at Google Maps to figure out where that block is because they all look the same. I was freaking out. It took me about one and a half hours to reach the customer. So I believe that every food delivery rider will undergo this trial by fire before they learn about the area. But this is something that I'm telling you now so that you can 
identify this need to improve and learn a little bit more before you really start on an actual shift because you can always practice. All right, so the second step is to prep. My advice is to start prepping one month before your first shift. All right, so don't apply first. So there's quite a bit of prep that you have to do depending on the gaps that you have identified in step one. So if you're bad in directions, you have to make sure that you read your area, find out what your delivery area is, and do your homework to find out what are the block numbers, what are the street names, and what are the main road junctions. So if you feel you lack stamina, start riding in progressive distances, and preferably also at different times of the day. So for example, you can start by saying, I'm gonna ride five kilometers in the morning from nine to 10. Another example is I'm going to ride 10 kilometers in the evening after dark from 8 to 9 p.m. Then the next week, try to ride a little longer, 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers. So at the end of the month, you're able to ride about 30 kilometers in about four hours. I think that's about the range. So that's all I have to say about prep. Give yourself a month, pace yourself, improve on your weaknesses. And finally, if you have reached your third step, congratulations. Now it's time to apply. The reason why I'm telling you to not apply first is because of the new rider incentive. All right, so for me, I applied to Food Panda a little bit too early and I missed out on the new rider incentive. Because as a new rider, Food Panda counts from the day of the account creation. And I wasn't able to change that because I have already applied and I've lost and I've lost like two weeks. So a new rider incentive is basically a bonus that will be given to you if you fulfill a certain number of deliveries in your first, say, three weeks or two weeks of your account creation. So the key thing is to make sure that only when you're really ready to start, then you apply. Because the minute your account is created, that is day one. So in order to not waste any of the days and making sure that you clock in the number of deliveries and get the new rider incentive, don't apply first. Research and prep first, then apply. Okay, I think that's about it for research, prep and apply. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and let me know in comments what stage are you at now. So good luck to you and I hope you enjoy your food delivery riding experience. It has to be fun, right? And no matter how much you research and prep, nothing beats the reality of day one. The first shift, the first delivery is always the most memorable. My first delivery was somebody in Togan Road East ordering from 925 Yishun chicken rice. So go out there and make fun memories of your own. All right, until my next video, be fun, be crazy, and love life.